What's up everyone, it's your boy Norm, Rad 89 here, bringing you another video. For today's video, I wanted to just make it a nice, chill video, not too much editing, nothing crazy. Today we're going to go over my steelbooks, my entire steelbook collection, all the ones I own. It's a very modest collection, I have a decent amount, but it's definitely something that I've been picking up and trying to do more of and want to grab more because I'm just, I've noticed I'm kind of like a steelbook fanatic and I love them. So today you're going to hear my thoughts and my opinions on the ones I have and probably hear which one's my favorite in the collection and all that kind of stuff. And please let me know down in the comments which ones you enjoy and you like and the designs and are you a steelbook fanatic? Is this something that you collect or you just don't care? I would love to hear from all of you in the comments and be sure to like the video that also helps out the channel. So let's do this. Roll it. So first up, we have the Halloween 2018 Steelbook. This is done by Todd McFarlane, and I love the simplicity of this one. It's just his mask, him holding the knife, and just the black and, like, gray and, like, white shading and stuff. Like, oh, a great, great Steelbook. Like, I really do adore this one. This is one that, like, I know some people were unhappy with the, like I said, the simplicity of this one, but I, I love it. Like, this is a really cool Steelbook. And still my favorite. To this day, this is still my favorite of the David Gordon Green trilogy. So yeah, Halloween 2018. Every time I return to this one, it ages like a fine wine. And that's probably because it's the most, out of the three that David Gordon Green did, it's the most akin to Halloween, John Carpenter's first Halloween from 1978. It's like very similar to that, a love letter to that film. So that's why I feel most connected to this one and this is the one i enjoy the most and i return to the most keeping in with the michael myers theme we have halloween ends right here and i know this is a very controversial one but this one is a zombie exclusive steelbook by the way but this is a film that me and my wife watched and i was like this isn't a bad movie i really do like the performances in it and a lot of the kills are pretty cool the cinematography is great the soundtrack is great like the score and everything but what hurts this film is that this is just a bad halloween film it's a bad michael myers film like it's not like i said it's not a bad movie it's a bad michael myers movie so that's what sucks about this one is that this is just not a good cap off ending one to the trilogy. I understand why people like this one. And like I said, I don't hate this film. I think I gave this one a six out of 10 when it came out and rewatching it. I still kind of feel the same way. It's about a six or a seven out of 10 for me. It's not a film I absolutely love, but it's not a film that I absolutely hate or anything. Now we have the Terrifier 2 Steelbook, Damien Leon, and Art has solidified himself as one of the greatest new horror icons that we've had in the horror community. Art the Clown is just fantastic, and I'm really glad that Damien Leon brought him to life for us. And this is a gorgeous steelbook for real, and one that, like, they got re-released. I think they got a new edition of the steelbook, and it got released because this one sold, like, hotcakes for real. Like, Terrifier 2 just is one of the best physical media sellers like of the last like few years for real and like I'm one of those people that I'm not huge on the first Terrifier I think it's okay like I don't like you know hate that movie I just think it's an okay film but I love this film Terrifier 2 is where it's at this one is the bomb and I can't wait for the third film in this franchise now we're on to some comedy and here we are with John Hughes Weird Science and this is one that I just Really love this film. Perfect, like, kind of silly, nerdy film about two best friends who are nerds and they freaking create the most amazing, perfect girl using their computer. And man, like, Bill Paxton here in here is just epic. And this scene right here, perfect example of why this film stands the test of time. And I think John Hughes was just one of those key people that knew how to write teenage dialogue and even look at this steelbook. I mean, this booklet for the steelbook. This is an Arrow video release and they did do a 4K of this movie, but I was totally happy with the steelbook. This is a 2K uh, presentation, I believe, but the steelbook was perfectly fine for me, so I didn't feel the need to upgrade to the 4K. Next up, we have another John Hughes written film, and that's Pretty in Pink, starring Molly Ringwald and John Cryer. And this is a film that is just so emotionally potent, and I think the steelbook is perfect. It's a very 
simple steelbook. I love the overuse of black, but then the use of pink and white and everything, and even the spine. I love the use of the pink, how it's pink instead of the overuse of black over here. It's perfect for me. I love the design of this one, really. And this is a John Hughes film for me that I think is the most personal. Like, when I watch his films, in terms of characters, in terms of story, I feel like this film is the most personal one that he's written and I feel like a lot of the emotional moments it has a lot to offer and like I said John Hughes is one of those writers that just knows how to write teenage dialogue and especially like I said with uh, Molly Ringwald's character being the daughter of a single parent in this film it's just for me there's a lot of stuff that calls back to me and like that I know you know what I mean that is very familiar and I like I said I adore this film and if you catch I love The Breakfast Club personally The Breakfast Club is my favorite of his films but I would say objectively looking outside myself you know uh, my personal taste and everything I would probably say Pretty in Pink is his best written, probably best film that he's ever wrote. Next up we have The Thing, and this isn't John Carpenter's The Thing, this is the prequel to John Carpenter's The Thing, and this is a fantastic steelbook. Look at the slipcover, it's just gorgeous. One of my favorites too as well, like look at that front piece and the back piece. Pretty much the only negative with this film is that it has CGI special effects. When you are going to be a prequel to a John Carpenter film that is heralded as one of the greatest practical effects films in history, you have to, oh, I almost dropped my disc, you have to deliver on the practical effects. And it's a shame that this film, they actually shot full-on practical effects for this movie, but they overlaid them with CGI effects, so it makes no fucking sense. But Mary Elizabeth Winstead is fantastic. Joel Egerton is amazing, and this is one of those films that if you watch it in prequel, and then you watch John Carpenter's The Thing right after, like, they really do flow together perfectly, and I do enjoy this film. Now we're here at the Wild Thing Steelbook, and this one challenges as one of my favorites. Like, you know, I'll talk about one other one when we come down to it, but this one is probably one of my favorites. This is done by Arrow Video and Wild Things, Denise Richards, Nev Campbell, Kevin Bacon, Matt Dillon. This is one of those films that kind of got me into more mature type films. It comes with this really nice booklet too as well. And this right here is probably one of the most iconic scenes, but yeah, for real. This is one of those movies that, as a teen, when I discovered it, it got me into knowing, like, oh, there's more movies out there than just slashers and zombie films and Three Ninjas and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Like, there's these more mature adult films that have some really awesome themes and stories, but, like, you know, conspiracies, backstabbing, court cases and stuff. Like, Wild Things was one of the first films that introduced me to that kind of stuff. Next up, we have my Carrie Steelbook, directed by Brian De Palma, and this is another one right here. This Carrie one and the Wild Thing Steelbook are the two that challenge for my best, like, favorite-looking one, because this one, the flow of the Carrie one is just amazing, and probably release-wise might be just as amazing, too, because it's got three discs, it's got the 4K, it's got the Blu-ray, and then it's got a whole entire disc of just pure special features, interviews, you know, behind the scenes footage, and like I said, actress, actor interviews, writers, you know, special effects people, like it's just really great. This is a release that has a lot to offer and one that I highly recommend for sure. And I believe this was um, Scream Factory release right here, yeah. Yeah, Scream Factory release of the Steelbook and man, Carrie is one of those Stephen King adaptations that I feel gets overlooked because there's so many good Stephen King adaptations, there's a lot of bad ones, but there's so many good ones as well, and I feel like Carrie gets overlooked, and if you catch me on the right day, I'd probably tell you that Carrie is even a better film than The Shining, and a lot of people herald The Shining as probably the greatest of the adaptations. Next up, we have the Transformers animated film from 1986, and this is The Steelbook done by Shout Factory, and for me, this is the only Transformers film that I feel like acknowledging. Like, I didn't hate the newest one. It comes with some beautiful lobby art cards as well, so this is one I highly recommend. I didn't hate the newest Transformers film. I did have fun with it, but for me, this one is miles and miles ahead of any Transformers live-action film that we've ever gotten, and mainly because, like, I'm a huge fan of 
the 80s television uh, series. So with this being the fact that it is the combination of that television series, and this is a 4K as well, it's a 4K and you have the Blu-ray. This is a culmination of that 80s TV show. That's why I love this film so much. Plus the soundtrack is fucking amazing. Like probably I would say top 10 soundtracks of all time this film right freaking here. Next up, we have a fun Arnie collection steelbook and that's Terminator 2 and Total Recall, if you can see that right there with the lenticular little slip cover that helps protect the steelbook because I really want to get some more of um, They have these cool like kind of doggy bag, kind of like comic book slips that you put your comic books in to protect them from getting damaged. They have those for steelbooks and I really want to pick some up. But this one already comes with its own, so that's fancy and it was really fun. And this was a sweet find, a sweet pickup, and a Lionsgate steelbook. Let me get that going the right way for you. And then there's the Terminator side. And yeah, like I said, with that fun protective case, the two discs right there. Probably two of Arnie's best films. Like a lot of people, uh, Terminator 2 is their favorite film of all time. And Total Recall is also a fantastic sci-fi film. So yeah, we just recently had a live stream on Mike from Did You See That's channel, uh, Z Talks. And we had the question asked of Arnie or Sylvester Stallone. And I, I said Arnold Schwarzenegger because I find myself returning to his films more. Predator, Total Recall, The Running Man. I have The Running Man one as well. So that's another freaking really fun film as well. So yeah, Arnie is one that stands the test of time for me. Is one that I kind of feel more akin to as a, you know, when I was a child watching him. And now speaking of Running Man, we have the 4K release and Steel book for Running Man and this is probably this is probably the Arnold film that I have the most fun with. It's not my favorite Arnold Schwarzenegger film, but it's the one that I have the most fun with. Like I definitely think Predator and Terminator 2 are better films, but The Running Man is just so much fucking fun and look at this steelbook. Like the steelbook for The Running Man is just a banger for real challenges carry and the wild things so right now you want to say like my top three are carry the wild things steelbook and the running man these two uh, these three right here are a banger and let me get this digital code out here i forgot this one came with the digital code and there's the inside no disc art though that's kind of sad get this disc out and there's the full-on inside and yeah the Running Man is just, like I said, so much fun. One of those films that just reminds me of being a child, watching these films on AMC or like HBO or something like that. And like, you know, discovering like a lot of these kind of crazy post-apocalyptic, nihilistic, you know, 80s films. Because the way that they viewed the films and the way they viewed the future in the 80s is just hilarious. And like this film... I think has a lot to say about, you know, social commentary as well and kind of uh, a satire too. It's got a lot of satirical nature comedy to it that I think lands today. And last but not least, and I say that because I do want to pick up more steelbooks, I am noticing that I am a steelbook fanatic. Like when I usually see steelbooks, like the one that I'm most recently going to try to pick up now, they have a new Lionsgate steelbook, I believe, that's coming out for Leprechaun, or I believe it's already out because I saw someone unbox it. And it's a steelbook for the whole entire franchise of Leprechaun. All eight films, and I'm a sucker for the Leprechaun franchise. The only thing I hate about the steelbook when I saw the unboxing was they stack the discs. And I kind of really hate that, but I really want to own all eight Leprechaun films. But let's get on to my last steelbook that I actually physically own right now, and that's Paranorman. Probably one of my favorite animation films, and one of the best like Halloween-themed films, and... This is another fantastic steelbook too, done by Leica, and really great colorization, and this comes with a gorgeous, gorgeous booklet as well. There's your discs, and this is a 4K too, so it has the 4K, and it has the Blu-ray, and yeah, Paranorman is one that stands the test of time, because if you're a horror fanatic and you're a horror fan, there's so many cool little Easter eggs and love letters to like Halloween and horror fans and Friday the 13th and yeah Paranorman is one of those films that just has strong Halloween vibes so every year during October guaranteed Paranorman's gonna be on in my house. 
So thanks for sticking around with me all as we went over all my steel books. I hope you enjoyed this video. And please let me know down in the comment section what you thought of it. And if you do like this video, would you like me to start going through some of my other stuff like all my 4Ks or all my VHSs or something like that? Because I do. I have VHS tapes as well. I have 4Ks. And if you'd want me to kind of dive more deep dive into those physical media collections, even by comics, I have a ton of comics too, if you want me to talk about that. So let me know in the comments if those are videos that you would be interested in. And be sure you like this video because that helps out the algorithm. Subscribe to the channel if you're new to this channel. That helps out as well. And all that notification bell, poke that because you want to be notified anytime my videos go up to YouTube. But most importantly, you all know what's up. Have a safe and happy day. Peace out.